everyone, Digital David here. Today in this video, I'm gonna be checking out the iRobot Roomba Combo J9 Plus. I did receive the sample directly from iRobot, but any opinion expressed in this video is strictly my own. That being said, if you're interested in this product or you wanna find out more about it, the link to it will be in the video description. Take a look at the retail box and packaging. Everything looks great. This is a robot vacuum and mop combo unit with auto fill dock. And you'll learn more about that dock on the side right here. We have some of our features and tech specs down here towards the bottom and we can see a nice underview of the vacuum with its cleaning system for both vacuuming and mopping. There's a nice graphic again of our auto fill dock. And now we're back to the front of the box. So let's go ahead, let's open it up and see what's inside. Here are all the contents. First up, you'll see our product literature consisting of our safety information, one year warranty card, and we have our setup guide right here with multiple steps continuing from the product packaging on getting everything set up. Next, you'll see we have a spare mop pad, power cord and cable with a 90 degree end on it, extra side cleaning brush, and an extra air filter. Last but not least, we have the vacuum to look at and it's clean base. Let's go ahead, let's look at these in more detail. Looking at the top of the Combo J9 Plus, you'll see our robots logo branding front and center, one control button, two tone, or if you wanna call it a three tone finish right here. This is our mop pad and module that lifts up and out of the way when it encounters carpets. So you'll see that little flap and hinge there. Take a look. This is just Velcroed on so we can easily remove, replace and clean as needed. Let's look at the very front of the vacuum. You'll see our camera and sensors, navigational bumper, sensors on the side, iRobot Roomba combo branding, another sensor there. The back has our dustbin and water tank with our release button there. This little flap on the side is what opens up to allow this to go up and down as needed, depending on our floors and what environment it's encountering. Let's go ahead, let's flip it over. You'll see the very bottom here, spring-loaded drive wheels, omnidirectional wheel, charging contacts, side cleaning brush, cliff sensors. We have our floor dirt and dust sensors right there. Air Force cleaning system, dual rubber brushes. This can also go left, right, up and down to help with any uneven floors, giving us best contact possible. You'll see our dustbin right here, automatic dirt disposal. That's where that's gonna self empty. And we can open this up. We can pop it right out. If we need to refill the water here, we can do that manually. We can manually empty and clean the dustbin right there for our contents. Swap out the air filter as needed. That just pops right off. Don't get that wet as you see there. But there's a quick look at the dustbin and water tank for our Combo J9 Plus. Now let's look at the base. Here's a look at the top of our clean base. I'm really excited about this base because this is iRobot's first version with auto refilling. So not only will it self empty, it'll refill the water tank on our Combo J9 Plus unit. You'll see up at the top one control button, two indicator lights for us. And we have just a fake wood finish, but we could use this as an accent piece in our room, little side table, things like that that this does remove but I would highly recommend just leaving it on it can be a little tricky to pull and put that panel right back in place here's a look at the side profile you'll see our grooved finish up at the top our smooth finish down at the bottom we got the iRobot leather strap and handle right here to open up our dustbin and water tank storage here's a look at the other side same design and finish you'll see the iRobot logo and branding down here here's a look at the back side nice carry and grip handle power cord hookup and we have built-in cable management and storage with two channels going out the left and the right side of the unit on the back to help keep this flush up against our walls. Here's a look at the base of the unit. You'll see multiple touch points here for grip. It's nice and flat to help it stick and stay stationary in any surface. You'll see our channel right here for the self empty if we ever have any clogs. It's just six screws that we can easily remove to clean as needed. Now we're looking at the front of the unit. That same pattern continues on the front. Self empty channel right there. Grip for the tires and wheels to drive up on, charging contacts, refilling. You'll see a little code in there too. That's gonna to be for the vacuum, for navigating with some sensors. And then we can open up this flap that reveals the inside with our water tank up top. And then you'll see we have 
our vacuum bag already installed with additional storage built into the side. Looking at it from the top, you'll see we have two shelves on the side with an extra vacuum bag already there for us. And then we can pop out the water tank. Nice grip handle, fairly large, like seeing that. Just a little cap to pop off to easily refill. And then you can just gently put it right back in place. It just snaps right in. And then we can look at that vacuum bag again that's already installed for the self empty just slides out on that tray so really a nice base covering all the basics for us water refilling and we have our self empty and a nice touch of adding some additional storage now it's time to charge it up and try it out We finished our first clean. Let's look at the results. First up, let's talk about the mop pad here. I'm actually just gonna pull it off so you'll be able to see it. We have not cleaned it after first use. So there's a look at the mop pad right here. Maybe some slight discoloration as I put it in the light. Like maybe right around there, a little bit there, but not bad. You'll definitely wanna clean it after every use. Looking at the rest of the vacuum from the top, just your typical dust and debris that it's gonna activate while it's cleaning. Look at it from the front, you'll see a lot of dirt and dust on the bumper and the side right there. So just make sure to casually wipe it down every once in a while. And then we'll flip it over, you'll see the very bottom right here. Tangle free, which is great. This is still one of the best systems out there. If you have long haired individuals, hairy humans, lots of pets, this is one of the best systems to avoid being tangled. 
every once in a while you might get something, but really compared to the competition, still light years ahead. Most of the time, if you get any tangle, it's gonna be on the side cleaning brush right here. Like my wife's long hairs, that's usually what's going to tangle on that and really nothing on this. So that looks good. Now let's open up our dustbin and we'll see some real world results from our clean. And look at that, you'll see some hair in there. I see a lot of crumbs. Now we've been having Roombas run every day recently here. So we had the regular J9 run yesterday and the i5 the day before, the combo i5. So we're still picking up a lot of stuff every day in our house. We'll get that emptied here, pull out some of the big hair, gross. A lot of crumbs, again, a lot of really fine dirt and dust too. We can look at that filter. You'll see some pet hair in there and then right in those cracks and crevices, we have a lot of trapped particles. And then here's a look at the actual contents and it really packs it in there. And again, I intercepted this before it did the self empty. Typically you'll see even more than this in one clean around your house. We're vacuuming pretty frequently now and I'm still blown away that we could get this much in less than a 24 hour period. With that first clean out of the way, I thought we'd look at the mobile app now. I'll give you a brief overview so you can get a feel for the layout and what we're able to control. So here we are, we're looking at our combo J9 all set up and ready to go. We have a great image of it. We see our current battery status. We do need to get this back on the charger. We have our internal and external water tank status indicators right there too, letting us know how full they are. You'll also see a map icon here. So you'll notice that we're able to have multiple rooms supported here. So you can add new maps. We can look at our current map. We can edit it as needed. You'll see that we can redivide rooms. We can relabel them. We can also add different zones. So we can do keep out zones no mop zones and clean zones. So not only can we do a room by room clean or a whole house clean, we can also do zone cleaning with this vacuum. So here's our keep out zones, just red boxes, drag and drop and reposition as you see fit. No mop zones gonna be that purple box, drag and drop as you see fit. And clean zones gonna be in blue and then just name it accordingly. Drag and drop again as you see fit. You get the idea there. So really easy map to set up and configure. You'll notice too, it does identify carpets and rugs versus the hard floors and surfaces. So we get that nice breakout right there too within the map. Moving right along, next up, you'll see we have our favorite section here so we can save our favorite cleans. Maybe you always wanna do a certain zone clean, a couple of rooms, things like that. You can organize and arrange that right there. Next, you'll see scheduling options. So we have the ability to set a schedule. You can choose time, which days of the week you want it to repeat. How do you want it to clean everywhere? You get the idea, so you can do that. We also have an automation schedule, so you're not choosing by time. It's just smart enough to sense when you've left the house and it'll start cleaning for you. Then we have our history down here, right below our schedule, you'll see our current cleaning history. So here's our clean, our first clean right here, one hour, 33 minutes and we get a nice overview of our clean. We can review images as well. Look at that, pretty sweet, right? So you can see all that right there. We can actually select begin review down there. You'll also see we have our area. So for an hour and a half, it cleaned about 463 square feet. It'll catalog dirt events for you, let you know if it had to charge at all and then resume cleaning. You'll see how it was started and initiated. And there's all of those different images captured around the house. And that's what we have to preview there within the app. So pretty cool that you can see all of that right there. So that's our cleaning history, nice breakdown. You'll see area and lifetime totals. Then we have our messages. So in this case, we have a new message. You have a new clean zone suggestion, so you can check your messages there. Next, our product settings here. Wanted to show you really quick what we're able to change and configure. It's gonna be under the cleaning preferences option. So choose your cleaning passes, one, two, or room size clean. Then you'll see bin full behavior. What do you want the vacuum to do? And then we have our liquid amount, eco, standard, or ultra. You can adjust that right there. I prefer to have it on ultra. Then we have our obstacle detection, toggle that on or off. And then we have our suction settings. So we can adjust the suction level on this vacuum from low, medium to high. 
So that's what you need to know. You can adjust water level and suction right here within the app. There's also things like child lock, change Wi-Fi, all of that good stuff as well tucked away right there. And then last but not least, you might have some beta options in the future. So be sure to check that tab if there's any new features that you would want to opt into and enable with your Roomba. So how does the Combo J9 Plus stack up against the competition? Well, let's find out. We'll be comparing it not only within iRobot's own product lineup, but also with the 50 plus Robovac and Mops that we have personally tested here in the studio. First up, we like to look at max suction power. This is measured in PAs. Unfortunately, that information is not published or readily available for the J9 Plus or even for any Roomba for that matter. So it's always a mystery to us. But I will point out if future measurements are any indicator, I'm going to guess it's below the average of 4,000 PAs. But who really knows? Again, just a mystery and just a hunch based off of the next metric, which is max CFM. We record this result ourselves, and usually this is also below average. You want to see both of these metrics really high. That's a good indicator for how good of a job it's going to do deep cleaning in our actual real world tests. But in this case, this actually for 4.8, this is the highest result we've ever gotten on any Roomba. That surpasses the S9 Plus. So it's great to see that a point above iRobot's average, still below the overall average, but you'll see in our deep cleaning score, we got a score of 95. The best possible score is 100. I have a little star there because I really believe this was a perfect score. There was a little bit of our vacuumed up debris still um, like in the channel, but not in the dustbin itself. And we had some water still left in the tank and a little bit of it dripped out during the measurement process. So I put a little star there. This could be a perfect score, especially because the regular um, non-combo J9 Plus that we tested did get a perfect score. So I'm giving it a 95 officially, but there is a really good indicator that this was actually a perfect score. Brand average 89, so always does really well. So you'll see the CFM didn't matter, the PA score being below average because we have above average results where it actually counts. Cleaning in the real world, you'll see we got a score of 89 versus the uh, typical average of 86. Next, let's talk about decibels. We got a max decibel readout of 70. That was actually uh, pleasantly surprising to us. We thought it would be louder due to the increased performance that we noticed with the CFM, but that wasn't the case. You wouldn't be able to tell if it was like a 600 versus a J series or I series vacuum. So the brand average is 68. The lower the score, the quieter your vacuum will be. You'll see the overall average is 69. So the good news is here, no distinguishable difference versus any other average Robovac. Next, let's talk about battery life. This is measured in minutes. We do not know the official battery life on the J9 Plus. We could only speculate. Maybe that'll be released in the future, who knows. From the battery life, we are able to glean from certain models. The average is 103 minutes for Roombas. Typically, it's gonna be in that 75 to 90 minute mark. The overall average though is 150 minutes, but that includes vacuums that don't have the capabilities to go back home, recharge and resume cleaning. So with the J9 Plus, to me, the battery life doesn't matter because if it happens to run out of juice before it's finished cleaning, and in my house it doesn't, hopefully yours will be very similar. You can just go back home, charge up and finish cleaning. And if you run this like I do when you're out of the house or when you're asleep, doesn't matter how long it takes to clean, because it'll be able to run, let's say for an hour, hour and a half, come back home, charge up for an hour, hour and a half, finish the next hour and be done before you're awake. Battery capacity, also an unknown variable here. So we could not find that information. It wasn't published for us. The brand average is about 2,200 milliamp hours. This battery is probably at least that since we do have the mopping capabilities as well. But again, still a mystery. I would expect it to be closer to the average of 3,600. Next, let's talk about height. The J9 Plus comes in at 3.4 inches. So since it doesn't use LiDAR navigation with any sort of sensor up at the top and just has the camera and sensor array on the front, we have a little bit of a slight decrease in height. 
So we're 0.1 inches below iRobot's average and 0.2 inches below the overall average, which includes vacuums like this, as well as vacuums that do have LiDAR that tend to be taller because of that module spinning the laser up at the top. Next, bin capacity measured in milliliters. This has a 400 milliliter dust bin. The brand average is 380. The overall average is 420, but that includes a mix of vacuums with and without self-empty. So kind of like battery life, it's a moot point here because it can just go back home and empty the bin as needed. This metric matters more if you don't have self-empty, you want that larger bin size because that means less frequent trips to the trash can for yourself. Water tank capacity also measured in milliliters, 210 milliliter water tank capacity. That seems to be the standard across the J and I series vacuums. So it's below iRobot's average of 300 because that includes the BravaJet M6, which is a dedicated mop. So that skews it higher. The overall average, a good mix of vacuums and mops comes in at 260. So I'd say we're well within range. You do want this to be higher though, because that just means that you do not have to refill it as much. But if you remember our combo J9 plus does have a much larger tank that it can draw and refill that water from. So really this is off the charts because it's going to be refilling itself. That's just how much it can store in it before it has to go back home and refill. So love having that refill feature. It's a must have. Next, let's talk about mop lift height. So we don't have a brand average here because our robot Roombas either don't lift the mop at all, or if you have certain combo units like the Combo J9 Plus, guess what? It lifts it up and out of the way. So the mop lift height is like measured in inches, right? So it will not make contact with your carpets. Love to see that. So it shatters the average here of 8.8 .8 millimeters, which is not enough to avoid contact with most pieces of carpet and rug, rugs out there. So this gets it up and completely out of the way. And last but not least, let's talk about the cost of this vacuum. This is the most expensive Roomba 2 date. You will be paying a pretty penny for these features. It's about double the brand average and double the overall average and maybe even adding a couple hundred bucks more to that. So anyways, this is going to cost you a pretty penny to get the best of the best that iRobot has to offer. So after using the iRobot Roomba Combo J9 Plus, where does that leave us? Well, let me share with you my experience. This is a really, really great robot vacuum cleaner, but it costs a lot of money. So if you have a ton of disposable income, you probably won't really care about my griping, but I've covered quite a few Robovacs. And for this price, we shouldn't be missing any features, but this vacuum is still missing features. If this was released two years ago, it would be a much better value. But today, not only do vacuums self empty, and refill their mopping and water tanks. They also clean their mop pads and dry their mop pads, and they allow access to cameras on the front so you can use them as home security devices. Some mops also have scrubbing capabilities with basically rotary brushes on them. That's more of a personal preference, what style you like best, vibrations or multiple passes or active scrubbing. But it'd be great to see other features with this product included at this price point. So it feels like a little bit of a miss. The suction and cleaning capabilities is top notch. That's definitely the best feature of this vacuum. I also think it has the coolest design lifting the mop up and out of the way. So if you are sensitive to that for whatever reason, you will love being at ease knowing you're never dragging a dirty mop or spreading those dirt and germs over your carpets or your rug. So those are the premiums that you're paying for. Some of the best cleaning available today and that really cool mop lift away, but you're sacrificing not having washing and drying capabilities of your mop pads and you're leaving out and missing the security camera access, which again, some of you don't want for privacy reasons, which I totally understand. But for me personally, it's really nice to have. If you're laying in bed, you hear a noise, you can just dispatch your vacuum to go out and look for you. Or if you're out at work, same thing, you wanna check on the pets, whatever, see what's going on at home, you could drive it around. So I'd love to see some of those features added in the future to make this a better value.